know, May, the end of May, June, I, I could get my house sold and my car sold and, and, and pack everything up and so forth. And, uh, so we made that decision. If God gave us the $10,000 in that window, um, they would go at the end of May or June. And within a week, I think it was within a week, maybe two weeks, we had, we had 5,000. Mm. Then I went up to, to, uh, a church in the North and a man walked up to me and he said, brother Mike, I always give you in your mission money at the end of every year, but maybe that's not when you need it. When do you need it? And he's telling me this in March. This is like a, a few weeks after we had prayed for 10,000. We have five. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I know in my heart that he usually gives us $5,000. And um, I said, well, sir, you know, all, everything within me wanted to say right now, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I will I couldn't send a family right now. <laughs> I couldn't send a family to the mission field without knowing that it, God was going to take care of them and they needed to know that. And so I just told him, I said, sir, whenever God tells you to give it is when we need it. Mm-hmm. And the next day he walked up to me and handed me $5,000. So within a matter of weeks, God had given us the $10,000 to send the Brown family to Ghana, West Africa. And I called brother Josh and I said, brother Josh, I got $10,000. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you and for go. him, it was like reality setting in like it was for me back when God sent us by faith. Wow. Okay, here we go. Um, and uh, they've been there for, and they went at the end of May. Uh, it was May 30th that they flew to Ghana, West Africa after, sur- you know, surrendering in March and being willing to go in March. And uh, they went to one church, their his home church from a boy to say goodbye. And uh, they went and they've been there in one month. It'll be two years that they've been there by faith. And uh, God has taken care of <laughs> all of their needs. Um, and, uh, you know, so those are just two examples. But I've got <clears throat> hundreds of little things yeah. that God has done. But those are some of the amazing things, the way that God has, has asked for supply, has sent supply. But, you know, I think, I believe still on our website, I think we still have them there. I don't keep it up anymore i used to put regularly on our website the things that god was doing i've got so many now that i put them in my journal but um on our website i know there is uh um that's what it looks like I, here actually i pulled it up now um yeah. there's a by faith tab yes and, sir uh even the story i think you just mentioned about brother um brother brown a, the, a brief a version of that is there okay so. so it's on there i didn't realize it had been put on there but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there's actually quite a few stories so those who are listening if they get a chance to go through and you know check it out there's there's a page of a long page full of stories there so awesome that's really good um so um i, I feel like you know as like maybe the average guy um and maybe you would feel like you're the average guy but most maybe would not but like in american christianity we'd we don't have to do a lot of living by faith if we don't want to. So what would you, you know, what would you, what advice would you give average Joe? Or like, let's say you were Mike Williams, the car salesman, instead of, yeah. you know, Mike Williams, the missionary, like sure. you were the guy in the church. Sure. What would your approach be to, to living by faith in sort of the, uh, the normal everyday average Joe life? Sure. Well, <clears throat> I actually had a man ask me, um, a few years back, he was, uh, he said, I've got, um, I, I won't be able to give his exact words. I'm trying to remember, but he's, you know, I've got, sure. my, I've got my 401k set. I've got, you know, my house paid for, I've got all my cars paid for, I've got yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. But what is living by faith for me? And I said, I can't tell you. Only yeah. God can tell you. Um, there is a living by faith that is living from day to day financially, but that's only one part of one side. And, and God for me specifically has asked that of me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think he would ask that of every person, but every person, they, there is some, there is a living by faith that God wants for them. Um, it can be for the CEO 
of a company who knows if he's a witness for Christ, he would potentially lose his job. Living by faith for him, maybe being willing to witness for Christ. Mm. Yeah. And trust God that whatever happens is in his control. Um, for the car salesman, as you mentioned, it may be, okay, if I don't say this and this and this about this car, I can probably sell it. Or, God, I can just be totally honest, and I can trust you that you can sell it anyway. Sure. Um, you know, the Bible says we walk, I think it's 2 Corinthians 5, 7, I think, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Hmm. Um, faith is, uh, in a nutshell, I think the, the easiest definition for me to, to give out is faith is just believing and acting upon the promises of God. Um, yeah. you know, to believe it is one thing, but you got to act also. It's not just believing. Um, sure. you really don't believe if you don't act upon it, but it's just right. believing the promise of God. So you've got principles, in the word of God, you've got promises, in the word of God, and <clears throat> it's looking at it and saying, okay, God, what God says is true, regardless of what my mind says, what society says, what anybody around me says, if God said it, it's true. If God has this principle, it will work. And that's fa- and so if God said it, I can take it to the bank. Um, and that's that's really the for the, the average Joe is, am I willing to step out on the principles and promises of God? And that's important in our society, especially in our Western world today, because so much of our world is geared away from faith. Yeah, um, it's all about man's reasoning, right? And Insurance man's wisdom, and protection, and. Um, and I, I, I've had I've had people tell me specifically um, that's foolishness. You, God gave us a mind to have wisdom, um, and my answer to that would be the I think it's First Corinthians that tells us, uh, "He that is wise in this world, let him be a fool." Um, the wisdom of God is wiser than man, and so we don't need any wisdom apart from the wisdom of God. And if there is wisdom out there that appears to be wise, but it contradicts the principles and promises of God, then it's foolishness. Um, the world looks at our faith as foolishness. Right. Uh, when we do stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely foolishness. Um, but it doesn't matter as long as God's promises are true and they are, um, you know, I have a good friend, a missionary friend who said, who's, uh, his name is Jason Dover. And he said, you know, there's there's no fine line between faith and foolishness. He said many people say there's a fine line between faith and foolishness, uh, but there isn't. Either if God said it, then we can we can act in faith, and if God didn't say it, then it's foolishness, not faith. <laughs> so sure, it's either sure. God said it or He didn't say it, and so it's not really where's this fine line. It's did God say this or didn't He? And if He did, then it we can go forward in faith. If he didn't, then it would be foolish of me to go forward because he didn't say it. Um, and so ultimately Jake, what it comes down to is walking with God and being close enough to him to have the confidence to go forward in what he asks us to do. Sure. Um, I think in a lot of cases, that's definitely like where we would fall flat. You know, like we, I wouldn't say there's not a need to walk with God because of course there is. But again, in that American culture, like, yes, you know, sir. I go to church, I have, you know, you mentioned the 401k, yeah. like I'm, I'm good, you know, in a lot yeah. of cases we feel that way and, and we're not even in that place to kind of trust God in the first place. Yes, sir. So I think you walk with God and you say, God, show me what it means to live by faith. What do you want from me? And when God says it, and that's a learning process, uh, yeah. I've made, I've made mistakes, uh, my own heart telling me something and not God. And it's a, it's, it's a learning to discern his voice. Not, you you know, I'm talking about things that aren't just plain uh, black and white in scripture. There are some very, obviously a lot of very simple things in scripture that are very plain, but there are things that aren't, you know, um, especially in mission work, where to go and when and such. Um, Right. But you, you learn to discern God's voice. There's some mistakes along the way um, uh, that not God's mistakes, but our mistakes, but right. Right. But he teaches us his voice and, you know, I'm trying to remember the passage and it's not coming to my mind, but add to your faith, patience and patience, experience and experience hope. Um, well, 
every time you step out in faith and God answers, um, it gives you more patience the next time in, mm-hmm. in the testing trial. Uh, and that experience of God coming through builds your faith so that he, and he'll keep building it into different areas of your life as you keep experiencing God is true and God is faithful and God is, uh, he does all that he says he will do. Um, I think the, the, a big hindrance to us in America, Jake is, um, you know, if you live by faith, uh, the way God asks you to, and once again, that's different for everybody, but God only promises to supply your needs. Mm. Um, and America, we, we, we live way beyond our needs. Um, right. and that's not wrong in, in and of itself, as long as, as, as those extras don't become idols that take us away from doing what God asks us to do. Right. Um, but that's, yeah, it, <laughs> And in your mind, is that one of like the biggest uh, hindrances to faith in general? Is that just like an American specific one? I wouldn't say America. Oh, it's definitely in America. I would say it's a affluency hindrance. It's flu- the hindrance of affluency. Sure. Um, and that's most of our Western world. It's not just our Western world, but you know, third third right. world countries. The Bible says very plainly that the poor are rich in faith. Right. Um, they don't have all of those things weighing them down. The Bible talks about. Um, those who have a lot, um, uh, I won't be able to quote it exactly, but they, they, they have a lot of things that distract them, right. um, and keep them from, from God and from faith because, uh, um, they that are rich in the, so they that are rich in this world, um, I think it talks about many foolish and hurtful lusts that draw them away or something like that. Um, that's the danger. Um, so yeah, in America specifically, our affluency, um, we as Christians somehow have gotten to the point where we think that God is only a good and righteous and just and fair if we have a lot of things like everybody else. Mm. Um, and once again, those things are not necessarily wrong. I think God has some people in this world. He puts them there to make money, to fund his work. And so they're naturally going to have more um, because he gives them blessings alongside of it with, with that, with, with alongside with that comes some extra stuff, Mm -hmm. but it's why, you know, is that hindering us? You know, when you talk about the parable of sower and the reaper, the, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word of God. Um, and I think that's our, one of our big idols in America is the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. It, it chokes the word to keep our faith from growing because we can't look beyond that and see that there's a life of contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. It sounds like even from your own story to the other, um, big hindrance, at least in my mind would be, um, like pride uh, or <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not even the word. And I'm not trying to say that you are oh, prideful. I'm just, you know what I mean? Like I know in my own life that you, cause you talked about, you know, like having your vision and you doing things the way that, you know, you thought they should be done. And, and I know yes, that's what I struggle with. And um, do you have any thoughts on like that being another big hindrance to living by faith? I, I think that's amazing, Jake, because uh, that when the, you originally uh, said that was a question, you know, the biggest hindrance is truly living by faith. Um, yeah, I, I, the two words that came to my mind for America specifically is 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 pride and greed. Mm. Um, but yeah, pride because God is going to ask us to do a lot of things that are not that are that that are, that causes us to be humbled. Sure. Um, if you listen to what God says, He will you will have to do things that people don't understand. Um, There may be nobody that understands, but you and God, and you just have to do it trusting in God. As I mentioned earlier, one of my friends said to me when I left Ghana the first time, like you're a fool for leaving all this. Um, that hurts the pride. <laughs> and I, right. I had to realize that everybody, nobody understood what was going on. Everybody thought I was making a mistake. Um, but I, I'll be, I, I'm just being transparent here, brother Jake. I, I've never had that big of a church again. 
Uh, I've never had that many staff members again. 